Hey guys, what is going on? This is Colin here, and today we're going to be going through the Pythagoras Theorem, okay? So, maybe you guys have heard of this before, maybe you haven't. It's some pretty cool stuff, so let's put on our thinking caps and let's get into it. So, what are we going to go through today? Basically, we're going to be, first of all, talking about right angle triangles. So what they are, how to identify them, some of the properties of right angle triangles, okay? So that's first. Then we're going to be talking about the Pythagoras Theorem. Super important stuff that's going to use, that you're going to use all the way through high school. Okay, and then we're going to finish off solving some problems and some word problems, all that kind of stuff to make sure we take what we've learned this lesson and putting it into practice. All right, so buckling guys, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what do you think we call these triangles? Now, I've already mentioned it already. So comment down below, what is the name that we use for these types of triangles? Okay, comment that down below guys. Okay, so hopefully you guys said something along the lines of right angle triangles. Okay, so that is what we call these whenever they have what we call a right angle. Makes sense. Triangles with a right angle are going to be called right angle triangles. Okay, um, so uh, the right angle is what we call an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, it's kind of like, I like to think of it as someone sitting upright. If they're sitting, you know, very straight and upright, then their, their body on the chair would be a right angle. So we use a square to symbolize the right angle, but I'm sure you guys are already familiar with that. Um, yeah, so that's a 90 degree angle. And we say that this triangle ABC is a right angle triangle uh, because it has a 90 degree angle. Okay, all it has to have is just one right angle and then we call it a right angle triangle. All right. Now, another thing to note is that we call triangles by the points. So because this triangle has the points ABC, we call it triangle ABC. All right. If we had another triangle like this, where we had different points like C, E and G, we would call this triangle C, E, G. Okay, sometimes we use that little triangle drawing there. Okay, so that, this is just different names that we can use for triangles, um, and it can be quite helpful for when we're kind of labeling, discussing triangles, that kind of stuff. So those are the two things I want you to get from this slide. What a right angle is, you know, and when it's on a triangle, and then also the naming of triangles that we use. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's move on to talk about the parts of the right angle triangle. So they're pretty simple to remember. All right, so no need to worry too much. We've got the right angle here. All right, we know that. We've already got the right angle, okay? And then we've got what we call the two legs coming off the right angle, okay? So the, the, the sides on either side of the right angle, we call the legs, all right? It's just a you know nice, easy term that we use, which is um, pretty easy to remember, okay? So we see, let's just move on to this. So we see that this is the right angle, and we see we've got the legs adjacent to it. So the sides running alongside the angle are the legs, okay? And then opposite the angle, all right, if you kind of draw a line opposite the right angle, you get to the side called the hypotenuse. Okay, now it is also the longest side on the triangle. So whenever you have a right angle triangle, the longest side is always going to be opposite the right angle. Right? It's an interesting kind of piece of information you can use. If you draw any type of right angle triangle, then the side opposite is always going to be the hypotenuse and it's always going to be the longest side. Okay, so I'm just going to write that below longest side. So it's, uh, you know, good to remember that that's, that's what the hypotenuse is is defined by. It's the fact that it's the longest side in the triangle, so you can have hypotenuses even when it's, you know, um, not a necessarily, um, you know, equal like this. Just any longer side on the right angle triangle, okay? So, okay. So this would be another example of a hypotenuse. All right, so what I want you guys to do, if you have some paper in front of you, I want you to draw any right angle triangle you can, okay? Any right angle triangle that doesn't look like these ones, draw one on the paper in front of you, and I want you to label, I want you to circle the hypotenuse. Okay, and then I want you to draw in the right angle symbol. So like this one. So I'll draw another one while you guys are drawing yours. Okay, let's say we have like this right angle here and the hypotenuse would be here. All right, so hopefully that makes sense for you guys so far. And yeah, just remember these kind of terms we use. All right, it's pretty simple, not much to it, just these little terms and then you'll be already on your way. All right, so um, yes, as I said before, the longest side of the right angle triangles, longest side of the right angle triangles or right triangles, sometimes we call them, okay? So, let's just get a warm-up so we can get into the Pythagoras Theorem. Let's do a bit of a warm-up, a little bit of exercise uh, with some calculations, okay? So, comment down below, what is three squared? What is three squared, guys? Comment that down below. All right, hopefully you guys said it was nine. Remember, if we say squared, we just mean times by itself. So three squared is just the same as three times three, okay? so that would give us nine, okay? So the reason we're doing these squares is because we'll see they're really important for the Pythagoras theorem. So comment down below really quick, 
what is 5 squared guys? Remember, that would just be 5 times 5. So hopefully you guys are all commenting that this would be 25. Alright, good work if you got that. Just a nice warm up so far. Alright, 12 squared. Think about 12 squared. What would 12 squared be? Hopefully you're yelling out at me, you're screaming at me, you're commenting down below really quick that that would be 144. Okay, again, simple as just going 12 times 12. Okay, so comment down below guys. Is it easy so far? Are you all on top of it so far? Comment that down below. Okay, so those are our just warm-ups so far. Let's get a little bit trickier. So we're going to do 6 squared plus 11 squared. Now, if you remember the order of operations, you've got to actually do the squares first. All right, then you've got to add those two together. Okay, so you do each square first, then you add the resultant numbers together. Okay, so in order to do this, hopefully you've already started working it out. You're going to first do 6 times 6, so that's 36. And then you're going to do 11 times 11, that's 121. Okay, and then we just add them together. 36 plus 121. So that'll give us 157. So our answer here, 157. All right, hopefully some of you guys we're all over that. So, this is the exact calculations we're going to be doing when we do the Pythagoras Theorem. Okay? So, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's do one more example. 3 squared plus 7 squared equals... Again, guys, you should be all over this. We've got a few more examples just to get you, your brain, in the mode. Alright? I want you guys to be rapid-firing these by the end. Alright? So, this one, 3 squared is 9. 7 squared is 49. When you add them together, you get 58. Okay? So, the answer to that one is 58. Alright? So, next one. 2 squared plus 4 squared gives us what? So, again, pretty easy, guys. Hopefully, you're already on top of this. 4, 2 squared gives us 4. So, 4 squared gives us 16. So, this will just be 20, all right? So, uh, that one is 20. Again, I'm sure you guys are all over it. Now, one more. Bit tricky. Use your long multiplication if you need. Okay? Last one before we get into the Pythagoras Theorem. Some big dog stuff, last little warm up, last little bit of little dog stuff um, before we get into the main part of the video. So, how do we do it? Well, we know 12 squared is 144, we've already encountered this before, okay? 15 squared, a little bit trickier, alright? I think for 15 squared you're probably going to have to do a bit of a multiplication here, alright? So 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 1 gives you 5, plus the 2 gives you 7, alright? Then we add the 0 for the next number. 1 times 5 gives you 5. 1 times 1 gives you 1. Remember, we ignore this the second go. Alright, so then now we have 225 when you add all those up, alright? So, this is 144 plus 225. Okay, so for the sake of time, you know, all you guys had to do was add those together. So hopefully you added those together and got the answer of 369. Now, if you weren't able to get that answer, try doing the you know multiplication again that I did up there. And then also do the addition 144 plus 225 yourselves to see if you can get to that 369 number, alright? So, give yourself a pat on the back. We've gone through the first section. We've done a few exercises to get into the mode of dealing with squares. Because now, we're going to jump into the Pythagoras Theorem. So, great work guys. As I said, feel free to have a stretch. Alright, let's move on. So, a um, little bit of history. All right, again, we're not going to be tested on our history in maths, but it's good to understand just around, you know, where this came from. So about 2,500 years ago, a very long time ago, you know, before a lot of people were born, before I'm sure anyone you knew was even alive, um, there was a Greek mathematician named Pythagoras who discovered a special relationship between the sides of right angled triangles or right triangles, okay? So this guy in Greece, one day looking at some triangles in nature, you know, triangles in the buildings, all that kind of stuff, and realized a pretty cool relationship between them. He realized that if we have a right angle triangle, okay, remember that is, if you just have a right angle on any, between any one, between any two of the sides, I mean, of the triangle. So all you need is one right angle. And so he realized that if we do have that right angle triangle, that the squares of the lengths of the legs so let's, let's break that down a bit. The square of the lengths of the legs. What that means, the legs, remember, are the, the two sides branching off the angle. You can kind of think of that right angle there as, you know, a head. And you've got the two legs coming off the, the head, all right? Maybe the, the, it's a little frog with some eyes, right? You can imagine that. Okay, the legs coming off that right angle. 
All right, if you square those, so in this case, if we have one side, which is three, let's say centimeters long, another side, which is four centimeters long. All right, then when you add those squares up, all right, when you add those together, you get the length of the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so really quite complicated in terms of everything I've just said, but basically if you take the two shorter sides or the legs, you square them and add them together, then you'll get the longest side squared. Okay, so in this case, three squared plus four squared equals five squared, which is a fact that we can verify. But let's say we didn't know this was five. And let's say we didn't know this was five. Well, we know given this theorem that if we take three, take the legs, so three squared and four squared. So if we square each of the legs, we add them together. So what will this give us? Comment down below, what will this give us guys? Well, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. So when you add them together, you get 25. So you know the longest side squared has to be 25. Okay, so what squared gives you 25? Well, we can do what's called the square root. Square root of a number kind of reverses that process, all right? So if five squared is 25, then that means that the square root of 25 will get you back to five. It's the reverse, the inverse of squaring something. Okay, so that, that way, without knowing it's five, we can work it out that it's five because it's a right angle triangle. We can add up the two sides and we get to the result, all right, which is 25. And we know that, okay, if we square the hypotenuse, we're gonna get 25. So what is the length of the hypotenuse? Pretty simple. All you gotta do is just square root it and you get back to it. Anyway. Don't worry if it's still a little bit confusing, okay? It's a, it can be a little bit tricky when you first see it. But let's just do some examples, okay? Let's do some examples. So, we see over here, 9 plus 16 equals 25. It's correct, right? So this is an actual real triangle. If you cut a piece of paper such that one side is 3 centimeters, one side is 4 centimeters, then if you join that length, it's going to be 5 centimeters. So what I, guys, what I want you to do is get a piece of paper, any piece of paper, right? And I won't use a piece of paper. I'll just use this, this iPad here, right? Um, but I want you guys to get a piece of paper. Okay, and I want you to rule a line that's three centimeters using a ruler. Three centimeter line, straight line. Then I want you to rule a line that's four centimeters. Now, I'm just using this grid here. See, this grid has one centimeter lines. So, if you have one side that's three centimeters, one side that's four centimeters, what I want you guys to do, draw a line in between the sides to make it a triangle. And I want you to measure this side. I want you to measure this side. So make sure that you draw a line that's three centimeters, draw a line that's four centimeters, connect them into a triangle. Remember, this is a right angle triangle. And I want you to measure this line here. So what I'm going to show you is actually pretty cool. Is that if I take this, right? If I take this length and I move it, if I move it, I'm, it's, it's changing in size a little bit just because I'm, I'm switching it. But if I were to move it straight, you can see how long is it? Well, it's one two, three, four, five. It's five centimeters, right? So I'm sure when you guys rule it out on your page, you'll find that if you then measure this line that you've drawn, joining those two sides, it would be five centimeters. So this is a pretty amazing thing that we can actually see is that when you, this, this amazing relationship between right angle triangles, it happen, it's not just some kind of abstract maths question that we can't really see. It's actually happening all around us. If you get any triangle, I don't know if I have any triangular shapes on my desk, but any right angle triangles, um, okay, well, let's just say I get a tissue and I fold it in half, right? Like this. If I were to measure the sides of this tissue, see, this is a right angle. If I were to measure the sides of this tissue and square them and add them together, I would get the length of that hypotenuse squared, right? I want you to comment down below. Are there any triangular objects around you on your desk? And if so, see if you can measure them, if they have a right angle triangle, see if you can measure them and see if the Pythagoras theorem really works. If you take the two shorter sides or the two legs, so on here, these would be the legs here. These would be the legs. Okay, if you take those two legs, you square them, you add them together, do you get the length of the longest side squared? Add it up, because you should. You'll find that if you find something that truly has a right angle, and it's truly a triangle, then you will get that exact measurement, which is quite amazing to think about, right? This guy, 2,500 years ago, found something that's just true for every triangle that's right angled. Right? So it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So I really encourage you guys to try and find a right angle triangle object that you have. If not, you can do this, you can fold a tissue, or you can, um, you kind of need something that's square in shape. 
in order to properly to fold it. A rectangle wouldn't really work. Um, so get something square, fold it into a triangle, and then measure it. All right? Try out the Pythagoras theorem and see if it's actually true. You can see if it's actually true. So anyway, moving on, we've seen the Pythagoras theorem is true for all right angle triangles. Let's look at another example. Okay. So first of all, remember how we name our triangles? We name them triangle GHI. All right, because the points of the triangle, those vertexes, the corners, whatever you want to call it, they're labeled G, H, and I. So we call it triangle G, H, I. Pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. Usually we say it in alphabetical order just because it just makes it easier. All right, so if we see that one side is six units, so again, these units could be anything. Right? Now we haven't been given units, so let's just say these are six units, we just call them. This side is eight units. Right, so if we have one side being six units and one side being eight units, how do we find the length of that third side, length of that hypotenuse? Based on the Pythagoras theorem I've just shown you guys. Comment down below, what would we do to find that third side? Alright, hopefully you guys said, we're going to square the legs. Remember, this is the legs. These here are the legs. Pretty easy, right? So we've got the legs. We're going to square them together, square them and add them together, I mean, all right? So what is this going to give us? Well, six squared, six times six is just 36. Eight squared is just eight times eight, which is 64. So that gives us a hundred. Now that means that this side, now this side is not a hundred. Make sure you don't make no mistake. It means that this side squared. So the question mark squared is going to give us a hundred. Let's write that, question mark squared. All right, we can call this any, any letter we like, all right? You know, we can use algebra, right? Maybe you're familiar with algebra, maybe you're not. We can use algebra to kind of work this out. So let's call this side the, the letter C. All right, it doesn't matter what letter, I could use the letter X, I could use the letter Y, I could even use a little circle if I wanted to. Any kind of thing that just represents it. So let's use the letter C. So we know that if we square the length of that hypotenuse, if we times it by itself, we're gonna get 100. So in order to find the length of that hypotenuse, in order to find what I've just defined as being C, in order to find C, which is the hypotenuse length, right? All we got to do is square root that number, right? Okay. Remember, square rooting is the opposite of squaring. So just remember that when you get your answer, when you add the squares together, you just got to square root. That's all you got to do. Okay. So then we see 100 square root. Well, what times is by itself to get 100? Well, we know that 10 times 10 is going to give us 100. So sometimes you need to kind of think about a few different numbers to work out. So the answer is going to be 10. Okay. So this is kind of, you know, if, you, if you're if you later down the track using a calculator, sure, you can just type that into your calculator. But even if you're trying to work it out yourself, which is I really encourage doing, I think it's better to try and work it out yourself without using a calculator. I think that once you have this line, C squared equals 100, once you know that something squared is going to give you 100, you can just think about what that number might be, all right? What that number might be. Okay, in this case, it's 10 because 10 squared gives you 100. So you've got to go through some numbers sometimes. You've got to think, okay, is it 9 squared? No. Is it 8 squared? No. Is it 10 squared? Oh, yeah, it is 10 squared. So the answer is 10, all right? So that's how we're going to do that question, all right? So another way of writing it is that 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. We've already written this, right? I mean, we've already worked it out. So we know that this is true. Right, because this side here is really 10 units. So the same thing applies. If you were to get a piece of paper, if you were to rule a six unit long line, draw, draw an eight unit line at a right angle and join those together, you would get a 10 centimeter line or 10, you know, if you're, if you're ruling six centimeters and eight centimeters, you would get a 10 centimeter line. So it's pretty amazing, right? So we can actually work out what that longest side is. Okay, so we can see, yes, we come to the conclusion that the hypotenuse is 10 units long. Okay, so um, here's an example. So we've got to find the hypotenuse of triangle ABC whose legs measure three and four units. Okay, so we've already kind of touched on this triangle. We've already kind of touched on the triangle with these measurements, but let's do it again just so you guys really understand how it's going to work. Okay, because it's really important to just keep going through some examples to make it, you know, really settle in as making sense, right? So we take three squared. We take four squared. Remember, you got the right angle. You got the legs. These are the legs here. Legs and leg. Right? You take the legs, you square them, and you add them together. So three squared plus four squared. What does this equal? Well, 
9 plus 16 is going to give us 25. Just add it up normally. Now, that means that this side squared is going to give us 25. Well, let's think of our numbers. Let's think of our numbers. Okay, well, 3 squared is going to give us 9. Okay, so it's obviously not 3 squared. We've got to go a bit higher. 4 squared is going to give us 16. Okay, still not high enough. 5 squared is going to give us 25. Right? So the length here is 5. It's whatever squared gives that number. Right? So you've got to kind of work that out. So that, that would make the length 5. All right? So sometimes it's not... Sometimes it'll be very obvious to you. You'll see 25 and you'll just say, oh, okay, it's 5 then. The square root of 25 is 5. All right? But sometimes you just need to trial and error through a few numbers. Right? You can make an estimate. If it's like 343, you might think, okay, well, I think my answer is probably going to be around you know, 12 to 13. You can try those numbers, you can try different numbers, maybe it'll be like 16, 17. You can try different numbers, this is an extreme example, right? Where, with a really big number. But, you know, you can try different numbers to try and work out what that is. So what I want you guys to do, just as an exercise, right, based on this, I want you to try and work out, using that trial and error method, what is the square root of 289? Okay, so what I want you guys to do, kind of estimate what numbers are going to times together to give 289. For instance, what's 10 times 10? Well, 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So it has to be more than 10. In order to give us 289, something squared, let's say x squared, give us 289, this number's definitely got to be more than 10. Probably, probably around that 15, 16, 17 mark. So what I want you guys to do, pick a number, multiply it together. Let's say we're picking 16, we multiply together 16. Right? Find the answer. And what I want you guys to do is work out trial and error, and then find the number which is going to square to give you 289. Which number times itself gives you 289. All right, so I'm going to put on some music for about 30 seconds just so you can guys can try that kind of method of looking for what number is going to get you there. All right, and once you've tried this, real, this example with a big number, it's going to be really easy when you come down to numbers like this. You don't even need to do your long multiplication. When you, when you see that your answer gives you 25, you'll just be like, okay, 5 squared, yep, 25. So the, the length of the side is 5. The length of the hypotenuse is 5. All right, I'm going to put on some music, guys. Good luck, all right? G give your god this one, all right? All right, guys. Pause the video if you need some more time. But that's, you know, 20 to 30 seconds for you guys to give that a go. Pause the video if you need more time. But for those of you that gave it a go and will manage to finish that, the answer would be 17. All right, so again, you could just go try numbers around there. And you find that if you do 17 times 17, let's do it now. 17 times 17. Let me actually do it over here. If we do 17 times 17, what is that going to give us? Okay, well, 7 times 7 is 49. So we're going to carry the 4. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. Pop down the 0 for the next number. Right, 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 1 is 1. Right, so if we just kind of add these together, let me get rid of this for some room. Add these together, we get 9, 8, and 2. So, we find that if we times 17 by itself, we get 289. So what does this mean? This means 17 squared is 289. So, that was just an exercise of trying to work out what number squares to get another number. All right? We're going to use this in all our examples. So I just wanted you guys to practice kind of that experience of testing out different numbers with a big number, right? So, all right, we see that, yes, the hypotenuse would be five units long. I've already gone through that, so no worries there. Okay, so let's actually talk about the actual wording of this theorem. We've seen the theorem in action. We've seen it on some triangles. The actual word wording is that the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. What a mouthful, am I right? Um, but comment down below, do you understand this? Does this make sense? If you read this slowly, do you understand what it's saying? Comment that down below. And if not, that's fine. It's a, it's a big sentence, right? So um, I'm sure some of you may be thinking, oh, not really, I can't really understand what it's saying. Well, let me go through it bit by bit. So the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so the square of the hypotenuse. What is this referring to? Okay, well, if we have a right angle triangle, like this, the hypotenuse is the longest side, the square of the hypotenuse, that length. So let's say we've got this triangle here. We've already dealt with this triangle. That, that longest side, which is 5, so the square of that hypotenuse side, so 5 squared, 
of a right angle triangle. We know we, we have to deal with right angle triangles here. It only works for right angle triangles. Okay, so the square of the hypotenuse is equal to okay, equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Well, sum means adding. And we're adding the squares of the other two sides. So the other two sides are three and four. So we're adding the squares of those other two sides. We're adding the squares. So the squares are three squared and four squared. We're just adding those squares. So we see we've gotten this same kind of formula that we had before. All right. Now what we see is that really, right, really, if we just have any triangle, any right angle triangle, now we don't need to know the lengths of these sides. Let's just call them A, B, and C. We can just call them A, B, and C, right? Any numbers. B could be 5. B could be 20. B could be 10 million. It's just any number. Okay? So A, B, and C, well, what we know is that the square of the hypotenuse, which is C squared, okay, is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So adding together the squares of the other two sides. So what we actually get for this Pythagoras theorem is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And these, these letters here, these variables is what we call them, or pronumerals, fancy words that you'll encounter at some stage, uh, maybe you've already heard them. But these letters are just any given side of the triangle. Alright, so we know as long as C is the hypotenuse, this is our kind of formula we can use. If we have A and B, we just plug them in. Alright, so we'll start using this formula now so that you can guys can kind of see it, but... Let's move on to a kind of practical illustration of this. How do we know that this is the case? Well, this is likely what uh, Pythagoras used to kind of illustrate this, right? Is that if you take the side length, so remember I said, we, let's say we call, um, let me use a white pen here. Let's say we call the longest side, the hypotenuse, C, right? Let's call it C. The other two sides become A. Well, if we square these sides, now this means literally making a square out of them. You see here, we've got squares of side length B, right? Because this is the same length as this length, because it's a square. Remember, we use that symbol for squares. So the area of a square is just really B times B, which is B squared. So you see, these squares have area B squared for this one. This one's going to have the area A squared, right? Because the side length is A. So the area of the square is going to be a squared. Okay, because remember, with the squares, to find the area, you just multiply the two sides together. So it's just going to be a times a, or, or a squared. Right? And then this last one, the area is going to equal c squared. Right, now what Pythagoras found is that if you actually take these squares, and you put them together, if you take this square, let me see if I can get a color that will, if you take this square and you take this square, and you kind of put them together, it's going to be the same area as the biggest square. Okay? It's going to be the same area. So, that's kind of like a little practical interpretation of it. If you put these squares together, so if I took this square and I moved it, well, let me show you. Not a perfect square, but if I moved it over here and I took these areas and I added them together, right, then I would notice I actually have the exact same number as this square here would be. Okay? So, again, that may be a little bit confusing, so don't worry if it's a little bit complicated, but just understand that not only do we have that formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, we can also see it with actual shapes. a squared, which is just the square with side lengths a, plus b squared, a square with side lengths of b. You add those together, you get the square of side length c, given that these are all parts of a triangle, all the sides of a triangle, okay? So hopefully you can see this kind of, this total is the same as these two added together, okay? So again, hopefully that makes sense. Comment down below, how are you finding it so far? Is it all right? Is it easy? Is it a bit tricky? Comment that down below. How are you feeling so far, guys? All right, because you're doing really well. It is, it can be a bit overwhelming at first, talking about Pythagoras' theorem. All right, it can be a bit complicated, but you guys are doing well. All right, so... Let's move on. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. Let's talk about Pythagorean triples. A pretty weird, pretty mouthy phrase there. Pythagorean triples. Basically, this is a set of three numbers that satisfies the Pythagoras theorem. So what this means, basically, 
is that if you were to draw these numbers on a triangle, would it be a right angle triangle? Would it make sense? Right? Kind of imagine this, right? Let's, let's think about deciding if the following numbers are Pythagorean triples. Let's try and decide if 8, 15, and 17 is a Pythagorean triple. Sometimes we call it a Pythagorean triad as well. That's another word for it. Those mean three. Both of them mean three, right? So, okay, let's think about this, right? So, basically what it's asking is that if I drew a right angle triangle like this, right? And I said maybe, okay, this side is 8 centimeters. This side is 15 centimeters. Would this side be 17 centimeters? If this triangle exists, if I ruled this data on my page, if I ruled an 8 centimeter line, and I ruled a 15 centimeter line, and I drew a line joining them, would that line be 17 centimeters, given that this is a right angle triangle? If it is, this is a Pythagorean triad. It's basically three numbers that'll work as sides of a right angle triangle. Okay? So, a way we can verify this, in a mathematical sense, right? Because we don't always have time to draw the draw the triangle on a page, right? We don't always have a ruler with accurate measurements, right? In order to verify this mathematically, well, we can use our formula I worked out with you guys yesterday, uh, earlier. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, right? Or you can write it the other way around. With formulas, doesn't matter which way you write it. Whether the right side's on the left or the left side's on the right, doesn't matter. As long as they're equal to each other, right? So, let's say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so... First thing is, what is C? Which one is C? Guys, comment down below, which of these numbers is the C in this Pythagorean formula? And I hope that you guys can see, maybe you saw it over here, a bit cheeky, uh, but maybe you guys can see that the 17 has to be the C there. Okay? It doesn't matter what the other two are, but the longest number, the longest, the longest side, the biggest number, has to be that C. Because remember, the Pythagoras, the pa Pythagorean formula is that if you add up these two sides here, the squares of these two sides, you get the square of the longest side. So that C squared, that C is really the hypotenuse every single time. Every single time. So hypotenuse always, right? Always the hypotenuse. Okay. So, 17 is the biggest number. So it would have to be, if this was a triangle, it would have to be the hypotenuse. Remember, because the hypotenuse is the longest side, so 17 would have to be the biggest side. So, 17 is our C. Alright, so you can see, um, the other two doesn't matter. The other two actually doesn't matter. So, but let's say we let A equals 8, B equals 15. So we're just saying for now, just to sub it into this formula, just to put it into the formula, try the formula. We're just pretending that, okay, well... We can see if this is a Pythagorean triple if the formula works. So, we're going to let A equals 8. 8 is one of our shorter sides. One of the legs. Uh, B is 15. Again, one of the legs. And then C is 17. Super important about this one. I'm going to do this one in a red circle. Because it's really important you get the C correct. The other two doesn't matter. Right, so now we just got to check. Does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? Well, you guys may have remembered before. We tested you on finding 17 times 17, or well, the reverse. I tried to see what number times together to give you 289, but hopefully you guys remember that 17 squared is 289, right? So, let's try this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So, A squared plus B squared, okay, well that is 8 squared, because remember A is 8. Let me just highlight this so we can kind of correlate it. So, A squared is 8, because A is 8. Right, B squared is the same as 15 squared, because B is 15, right? Now, what we're trying to see, does this equal, does this equal C squared? We want, for this to be a Pythagorean triad, we want this to be A squared plus B squared, we want this to equal C squared, right? Okay, so let's see. Well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's kind of do our own working here, just so you can kind of see me work it through. Well, A is 8, so 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. Remember, this is C. So let me let me do another another highlight color. Let's do let's do a pink here. And C is 17, so we've got to put C as 17, right? So all we're doing is we're setting the numbers, right? So you guys see how we picked these numbers here. We picked, we've been asked about these three numbers. We've picked the letters. Super easy stuff. Right? Now we just write it out in the formula, the Pythagoras formula, Pythagoras formula. And all we're going to do is check if this is correct. Well, 
8 squared plus 15 squared. Let me, let me temporarily remove this triangle for a second. Kind of scribble that out a bit. Okay, so 8 squared, okay, that's 64. 15 squared, you might remember from before, is 225. If you want, you can do the multiplication again. But yeah, 15 squared is 225. And 17 squared, remember, we saw that that was 289. Well, is this, is this equal sign true? Are these two sides equal? Well, 64 plus 225 does give us 289. You can add it up if you like on the side. Try it. Give it a go. So we can see, okay, yes, it does equal 289. We see that these two sides are equal. So the formula is true. The formula is true for these numbers. Formula is true for these numbers. And what does that tell us? Well, if the Pythagorean formula is true for a set of three numbers, then those three numbers are a Pythagorean triple. Okay. So, hopefully that makes sense. Right, I've gone through it really slowly because it can be a bit tricky when you first see this. Okay, I've gone through it really slowly. Feel free to rewatch it over if you need to kind of digest through it again. Watch it again. Um, but yeah, basically, if you want to find if three numbers are Pythagorean triples, you pick the C. This is the longest one. This is the, the C. You plug them into the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Does it work? If so, you got yourself a Pythagorean triple. If, however, I got a number here that was like, I don't know, maybe 562, this does not equal 289. So I would say, no, these aren't Pythagorean triples. Okay? So, hopefully that makes sense. We see these ones satisfy the formula, so they are a Pythagorean triple. All right? Comment down below, is this making sense? Did I go through it too slow? Did I go through it too fast? Comment down below. I tried to make it nice and simple for you guys. And I'm sure you guys are following along nicely. Again, feel free to rewatch over if you need uh, to you kind of like, you know, reaffirm or confirm that you, you're all over it, all right? So, good job, guys. You're doing amazingly. Let's move on. Let's try another example. Right? We can try examples until our legs fall off. We'll just keep getting better and better. All right, let's have a look here. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to get rid of the working. I'm just going to ask you guys. Decided the following numbers are Pythagorean triples. Now, I went through the last one really slowly. This one, I'm not going to go through as slowly. Right, because I want you guys to try and work on this yourselves. I'm going to put on some music for about 30 seconds. Pause the video if you need more time. I want you guys to see and decide if these numbers are Pythagorean triples. Okay, I want to see if these numbers are Pythagorean triples. All right, do the same working from before. Plug it into the formula. Good luck, guys. And enjoy some groovy Kahoot music. music very groovy comment down below do you guys like this music it's the reggae kahoot music I thought, I thought that was quite funny so I've been using that music anyway hopefully you guys were able to get a start on that let's have a look at how we're gonna do it all right so what we're gonna do okay first of all we identify what is a what is B what is C the only one that matters is C this one's C because it's the longest number the biggest number, I guess. feels weird saying the longest number. I mean the longest side on the triangle. The biggest number, right? So, we're going to let C equal 9. And then the other two, it doesn't really matter. We can let the smallest one be A if you want. Maybe that's a good way to kind of just treat it always. So, let's say A equals 4, then B equals 5. So, the smallest one can be A. Makes sense, right? You do it. You do alphabetical order with the number order, right? So, you just go from biggest to... Sorry, from smallest to biggest. A, B, C, smallest, middle, biggest. Okay, so we've let our numbers equal that. Now we just need a test. Okay, does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? Well, A squared plus B squared, what's that going to be? That's going to be 4 squared plus 5 squared. Remember, we're just subbing in those numbers. We're just going to sub in A is 4. So we're just subbing in 4 there. Okay, B is 5. So we're just subbing in 5. Then C squared, yeah, that's right, you guessed it. We're just going to sub in 9. Okay, not, not too complicated, right? When you, when you see it like that, you're just following through easy steps. So, now we just need to work out what each of these are. 4 squared is 16. 
So I'm just kind of rewriting it out now. Instead of writing 4 squared plus 5 squared, I'm going to write 16 plus 25. Because 5 squared is 25. And then what's 9 squared? What's 9 times 9? It's 81. Right, so let's add up the left side. What's 16 plus 25? Okay, let's do a quick addition here to just work it out. 6 plus 5 is 11. Carry the 1. 5 plus... Sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. Plus 1 is 4. Well, 16 plus 25 is going to give us 41. Does 41 equal 81? No, it doesn't. I'll put a line through this. And go like this. Does not equal. Therefore, so, not a Pythagorean triple. And so you guys see how that works? You just plug it into the formula. You see how it doesn't work here? Last example, we saw it works. We saw we got 289 equals 289. Right? This example, we see we don't. We get numbers that aren't equal. So, it's not a Pythagorean triple. That's how we do it. All right? So hopefully that makes sense, guys. All right, you can see another way of working it out here. You just do the a squared plus b squared. Plug that in. Work out the number. So, we, so you get 41 when you add them together. And you can just square root it to see if it equals c. And this does not equal c. Okay, so another way you can do that. Like... You can do it the way I showed you, or you can do it this way. When you square root the number, so this would equal 41, right? Then all you got to do is square root, square root your answer. Sorry if my writing's a little bit atrocious. Square root the number. Square root the number, and you can see, check if it is C. You can see if it's C. See if it's C. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so we conclude that it is not a Pythagorean triple. Right? Not a Pythagorean triad, whatever you want to call it. All right? So, hopefully that makes sense. Now, another way of doing this, and it's kind of the exact same question really, is we're asking, is this a right angled triangle? So, think about that for a second, remember? If we're given three numbers and we're asked to find, okay, is this a Pythagorean triple? Well, what we're really asking is if we put those numbers in a triangle, would it be a right angle triangle? Because that's what defines the Pythagoras theorem, that it has to be right angle triangles. So, the question is, if we get these three numbers, does it work in Pythagoras' theorem? Do they work in Pythagoras' theorem? If they do, then it's a right angle triangle. Okay, so, basically the idea is, if, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say PT, Pythagoras theorem. I want you guys to comment down below, PT equals Pythagoras theorem, just so I can save you guys some time. If PT works for these three numbers and if PT works for these three numbers it is a right angle triangle okay it is a right angle triangle if not then it's not a right angle triangle all right so hopefully that makes sense we just got to take these numbers and like the questions before we take the numbers we can list them out we can just write okay four seven nine all right, let's try it. Okay, let's say that 4 is A, 7 is B, 9 is C. Remember, ascending order, just let those letters equal that, all right? Then all you got to do, all right, let me show you the other way. You can do it this way that I've kind of showed you here uh, in the um, previous slide, is that, okay, so A squared plus B squared, and basically you're now checking if that equals C squared. You're checking if it equals C squared, because C squared would be, let's, let's, let, let's show you the other way that I was kind of approaching it. Again, always good to know a few different ways. Is that, okay, if we know the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, well, a is 4, b is 7, c is 9, so we just plug those in, and let's work it out. Okay, well, 4 squared is 16, 7 squared is 49, and 9 squared is 81. So let's add them together. 16 plus 49, what does that get? Comment down below. Hopefully, you guys, we're pretty quick on that. You can see that that equals 65. All right, so this does not equal 81. It's not equal. So, another way of doing this, right, like we said here, is we check a squared plus b squared. Right? We want to we wanna eventually see that this equals c squared for the formula to work, right? A, a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared. We just see what it is. Okay, we get to the fact that it's 65. Alright, but we get to the fact that it's 65. Is this equal to c squared? No. Because c squared would be 81. c squared is 81. Right, so this is this here is a squared plus b squared. Remember, we've worked it out through the lo logic. a squared plus b squared. We've worked this out. So it is not equal to c squared. So, because they're not equal, over here we've also said that they're not equal. There are different ways of just finding that they're not equal. Well, we see 
the triangle is not a right angle triangle because Pythagoras theorem does not work. Not a right angle triangle. So really, it's a different angle. This angle here could have been a right angle triangle, could have been a right angle there, right? But it's really just another angle. We don't know what the angle is because it's not necessarily drawn to scale, okay? But probably an obtuse angle, maybe something like 100 degrees. We don't know. Doesn't matter. We just know it's not a right angle because it doesn't work for Pythagoras theorem, okay? Comment that down below. Pythagoras theorem doesn't work means it's not a right angle triangle. Comment that down below. It's a bit of a long sentence. If Pythagoras theorem doesn't work, it's not a right angle triangle. All right, I want to ask you guys a question. How are you feeling? Is it feeling okay? Are you feeling like it's a bit tricky? Are you on top of things? Is it easy? Comment that down below, guys. I want to see all your comments. All right. So, let's get on to a bit of a tricky question. Maybe it's tricky. Maybe you big dogs will be able to handle it with ease. We'll see. Right, so we're given a bit of a diagram here. Right, it's not just a triangle. It's a rectangle. Maybe you can see a triangle inside here. Maybe you can even see a right angle triangle inside this triangle. So write down an equation using the pro numerals given in these diagrams. Okay. Using these letters, I want you guys to write, comment down below, an equation. Right. Comment down below a formula you can use to kind of work out these, you know, the relationship between these based on our Pythagoras theorem. What I want you guys to do then, find the triangle that these all three relate to. Then work out what the formula would be, given the different letters. Okay, we, we've been using A and B, but we haven't been using X. So, give it a go. I'll put on some groovy music. Let's see how you go. Turn it down a bit. Hopefully that was enough time for you guys to think about it. If you haven't done it already, you can pause, no worries. There's no problems. But for those of you who have done it, well, we know usually, remember, Pythagoras theorem, the sum of the squares of the legs, or the smaller sides, shorter sides, if you square these and add them, you're going to get the square of the longest side. You're going to get the square of the longest side. The longest side is X, you see? You see, this is the triangle here. It's a triangle here, right angle triangle. And so you've got to identify, no matter where that triangle's positioned, you've got to identify what are the legs, the ones coming out of that triangle, coming out of the right angle, I mean. Identify the legs. Add them together, square them. Right? Then this equals the longest side squared. Okay? So you could have either written this, or you could have written the other way around, doesn't matter. Same thing. All right? So hopefully you guys got that. Comment down below if you didn't get this, what's confusing you about it. And feel free, you can rewatch the video and make sure you got a good grasp on this, right? So, all you got to do with these ones, guys, all of these ones, we're going to go through a few more. You just look for the lot, you look for the triangle, right? First of all, find the triangle. Second of all, find the hypotenuse, right? So, find the triangle. So, in this case, we had a rectangle, but the triangle is pretty obvious. We can see there's a triangle here. There's also a triangle here, right? There's also a triangle here, but... We don't have the lengths of those sides. So find the triangle that we know all the sides for. So I'm just going to write find the triangle. And then we're going to find the hypotenuse. And then you just got to plug in the equation. Alright, so we found the triangle. We found the hypotenuse, which is x. x is the longest side. So then you just do the hypotenuse squared equals the other two sides squared. Pretty easy. Right, the hypotenuse squared is going to equal the other two sides squared added together, always. So let's have a look at another example, right? We've got a circle now, well, semicircle, right? Pythagoras theorem doesn't work for circles, but can you find the triangle? I'm sure you guys can see the triangle, the right angle triangle. What are the legs? What is the hypotenuse here? All right, I'm not going to give you guys as much time now. I think you guys can work it out in about 10 to 15 seconds. What's the hypotenuse? Write the equation. Write the equation down. Short and simple. Okay, so. Pause if you need more time. But the triangle is here. Right, that's the triangle there. Alright? Now, the longest side 
or the side opposite the right angle. Remember, the side opposite the right angle is D. The D is the hypotenuse. Okay, so all we got to do, D squared, which is the hypotenuse, is going to equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And just add together the squares of the other two sides, A squared plus B squared. So we're just kind of assuming that B is this length here. Now, the question hasn't really been really specific, okay? But in order to do this question, the B had to be this side length here, okay? So, hopefully that makes sense, right? Now, let's move on to another one. All right, now it is a triangle. We can see it's a triangle. I want you guys to write the formula. Different letters. We don't use any of these letters. We, we were using A, B, and C. These are completely new letters. Write down the formula. Right away, guys. Comment down below. What is the formula? Okay, so hopefully you can see straight away the hypotenuse is this side here. Hypotenuse is this side here. These sides here are the shorter sides. And these sides are the shorter sides. So the hypotenuse is squared. Right? X squared. Remember the hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. I'm just adding up the other two sides and squaring them. You guys can see the pattern now, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys are all over. Comment down below. Is it really easy now? Are you sick and tired of these questions because they're so easy? Comment down below. Alright, let's do some word problems. Get a little bit trickier with them, okay? A little bit trickier. So, let's say we have... We're driving. Right, let's say we're driving. Imagine you're driving your car eastward for 48 kilometers. That just means towards the... Well, in this diagram, it's the arrow is pointing to the left. Um, so let's just say that this is... You know, okay, let, let's... Let's say this is west. Let's say we're, we're driving west. Okay. Driving to the west. Remember the directions here. I like to remember with nether, eat, soggy, wheat bix, right? So, we're driving west. We're driving 48 kilometers to the west. Okay, and then let's say we drove south for 36 kilometers. Alright. The question is, how far... Are you from where you started? Alright, so we've we've drawn a line here. We've drawn a line down here. So we've really we've driven 48 plus 36 kilometers, but that's not how far we are from where we started. How far we are from where we started is you know the straight line distance. The distance from where we are, we're here right now, to where we started, which was over there. Okay, so we're trying to find that distance. Now, what do you guys notice? about the kind of shape that has just been formed by this situation, by this word problem. Comment down below. What type of shape is this? I, I, I'm sure you guys can see it's a triangle, but what type of triangle is it? And what does that mean for us? Hopefully you guys are saying that that means we have a right angle triangle and we can use Pythagoras theorem. Because Pythagoras theorem works for all right angle triangles. So, all we need to do, write the formula, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. All right. Now, what is the length of C? What is C? Well, C is this longest side. All right. Let's leave it as C. Okay. We can just call it C because it's the unknown here. Remember the hypotenuse, the one opposite that right angle, the longest side has got to be C. So we leave that one the same. Well, what is A? Well, A is 36. The shortest one is 36. All right. So let's just write. Okay. Well, if we have A squared, we're just going to write 36 squared because 36 is A. And what's B? B is 48. So we're just going to write plus 48. Okay, now, we've got to add these up together. These are really big numbers. Right, really big numbers. When we deal with real life, we're not just dealing with easy, small numbers. We've got to, okay, we've got to times 36 by 36 to find 36 squared, right? So, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 3 gives us 21. Right? Now, we're going to put down our 0. And move on to the next line. 3 times 6 is 18. I'm going to carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Okay, so what we get when we add these together, 6 plus 0 is 6, 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 0 is 2, and 1 there. So our answer is 1, 2, 9, 6. So we get 1, 2, 9, 6 for this 36 squared, okay? Now, let's do 48 squared. Okay, let's do 48 squared. Right, again, when we're dealing with these big numbers, sometimes you just need to take a moment just go back to your basic calculations. Okay, so, 8 times 8 is 64. I'm going to run through this one a little bit quicker than the, the last one, just because, you know, you guys can, I'm sure you guys can do these multiplications yourself. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 4 is 
plus 6 is going to give us 38. Okay, we're going to put down our 0. Um, 4 times 8 is 32. Carry the 3. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus 3 gives us 19. So we get 4 here, 13 here, and a 2 there. Alright, so 48 times 48 is going to give us 2304. 2304, right? So we really see, okay, if we add these up now, again, lots of whoops, lots of calculations involved here, right? We've got to add these up now. So be prepared. Be prepared to whip out your, your calculations when needed. So we've got to add 1296 plus 2304. Let's add these together. Okay, we've got 10 here, carry the 1. We've got 10 here, carry the 1. We've got 6 here, and we've got 3 here. So our number is 3600. Now, we have an unknown number. Squared gives us 3600. Well, the good thing about this is we can see, well, we have a 36 here, right? We have a 36. What number squares to give 36? Well, 6 squared is 36, right? So what that means is if we have another two zeros here, if we have another two zeros here, what we can say is that that means that 60 squared, 60 squared is going to give us 3,600. Right, because 6 squared gives us 36. Since we're squaring the, the, the tens here, we get 100, right? So it's just a little trick you can use. Is that if you're squaring a number, right? 6 squared gives you 36. Well, if you then have that number multiplied by 10, so 60, you're going to add on two zeros. So let me show you another example. It can be a bit confusing. But let's say if we know that, um, let's say we know 5 squared equals 25. Well, 50 squared is going to be 2,500. Add on two zeros. If you add on one zero and square it, you get two zeros as your result. Right? So that's a little trick we can use to work out that C here, well, C has got to really be 60. Because right? if C squared equals 3,600, then C has got to equal 60, right? So, and it makes sense, right? If we kind of look at this diagram, well, if this is 48, we know that this side is a little bit longer, but not too much longer. So it's got to be around 60. So we can say, yes, the answer is 60 kilometers here. We are 60 kilometers from when we started. All right, so that's how we can use Pythagoras theorem for some word problems, okay? So this is just some working out here, set up the same way, you know, using the formula, and then working out 3,600, then to work out C, we just square root it or find out what the square is. So 60, like we did. So we see that our answer is then 60 kilometers, right? That's our final answer. Okay, so um, let's now, this question, right? So what I'm gonna do before we get into the question, I'm actually gonna change this number to, to be eight, all right? Now, the, our goal is to find the length of the diagonal. Right, find the length of the line joining the opposite corners and that kind of diagonal line going across there. Now, what I want you guys to do, I'm going to put on some music. I want you to identify what triangle we can use to identify that side. Use the lengths of the sides you have, plug it into the Pythag formula. Right, I'm going to call it Pythag for short now, which means Pythagoras for, um, formula. Let's give it a go. Good, good luck, guys. Okay, I reckon that's enough time for you guys. Pause if you need more. But again, guys, this is our triangle we're going to identify here. I've already highlighted one side. Remember, your triangle always has to include the side you're trying to find, right? And then the other two sides should preferably be sides you know. And so what side is the unknown? Well, it's opposite the right angle. So it's the hypotenuse. So when we use our formula, c squared equals, well, let me write it like this. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, we know that that c has got to be this longer side. Now comment down below what is A and what is B. Hopefully you guys will comment that A is going to be 8, B will be 15, and C we don't know. Okay, So 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225 from before. Again, if you want to verify any of these calculations for yourself, feel free to just go on the side of your paper and just do the multiplication, 15 times 15. Just feel free to do that if you, if you want to just make sure you know it for sure. Good practice. And so we know, again, this is equal c squared, so we're just keeping the sides of the equation the same. Remember, we're not, not changing anything drastic here. And so if you add these up, again, feel free to use your multiple, uh, your addition on the side. We see that 289 equals c squared. So what is c? What is the length of that longer side? Well, if you remember before, 
what number squared gives you 289? Well, number is 17. Again, feel free to verify this. If you do 17 times 17, you would get 289. Okay, so the longest side here is 17 centimeters. Now, again, ask yourself, does this make sense? If this is 15 centimeters, does it make sense that this is 17? Well, to me, I think maybe it's a little bit out of scale, but I think it's I think it's very good actually. I think um, I think they are about the same length, but the the diagonal is a little bit longer than this 15. Okay, so ask yourself, does it make sense? If you got maybe 5,000 centimeters, you know, okay, that can't make sense. How can a triangle have 15 centimeters and 8 centimeters, and then one side being 5,000? Just doesn't make sense, right? So that answer is 17 centimeters. Hopefully that one wasn't too bad for you guys. You can see, again, sorry, I had to change that number to an 8. Um, but yeah, apart from that, that one hopefully wasn't too bad. Just simple use of the Pythagorean formula. So, good job, guys. That's the, that's the end of our content. We're just going to check our understanding. Quick fire, quick fire questions, just to make sure you're all over it. All right, so first of all, what's the longest side of a right angle triangle? Comment down below. You have three seconds. Comment down below, quickly. All right. It's the hypotenuse. Good. Hopefully you guys all commented that. Okay, who came out? Who came up with the Pythagoras' theorem? Pretty easy. It's in the name. Who came up with the Pythagoras' theorem? Answer is Pythagoras. All right, last one. Just yell it out at me. No need to comment it. Just yell it out. What's the formula for the Pythagoras' theorem? Okay, hopefully you yelled out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Hopefully you yelled that out at me. Right, comment that down below now. I want you to, you've yelled it out, I want you to comment it down below. Just to make sure you're 100% on top of this, alright? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Really important to remember. Alright, so we can see the answers here. Perfect. Okay. If you said C squared equals A squared plus B squared, you're also right. Remember, it doesn't matter what side of the equation we do, as long as it's the same equals. Okay, so, we can check all of these. What I want you guys to do, so you can pause the video now. I want you to tell me, are these right angle triangles? Okay? I want you to give a go, plug all these numbers into the formula, and tell me, are these right angle triangles? I right, pause the video now and do that. Hopefully you guys will see, once you unpause, that yes, this one works, because 3 squared plus 4 squared does equal 5 squared, so there's no worries there. Alright, this one is yes, because 9 squared plus 12 squared gives you 15 squared. Now this one, again, maybe needed some multiplication to work out, but 2.5 squared plus 6 squared does not equal 6.5 squared, alright? So feel free, if you didn't get those, to try the calculations again, make sure they work, alright? Just make sure, and um, yeah, give those ones a go. Now, last question before we go, right? If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which of the following triangles has a right angle? Alright, again, very similar to the last question, plug these numbers in, and have a look which ones have a right angle. All right. So if we do, or well, for instance, if we do one squared plus one squared, what does this give us? This gives us two. Is two squared equal to two? No, it's not. Two squared is not equal to two. And so this is not a right angle triangle. All right. Let's have a look at option B. All right. Two squared plus three squared. That's A squared plus B squared. Remember, look at the two shorter sides. That gives us four plus 9, that gives us 13. Is 5 squared 13? No, it's not. 5 squared is 25. So this one's not a right angle triangle either. The last one, 9 squared plus 40 squared. I want you guys to try this one yourself. Bit of a challenge. Alright, try the multiplications yourself. See how you go. I want you to comment down below once you up to it again. Once you um, manage to find out whether it's a right angle triangle, comment down below. Is it a right angle triangle? I want to see you guys comment down below. Okay, so... Before we finish off, guys, one more challenge. You've done really well. One more challenge, maybe to think about after the lesson, okay, is try and find the total number of Pythagorean triples with whole numbers of less than 100. So you can't use any numbers bigger than 100. If you guys can have a think about, you don't need to get all of them, but just have a think about some of them. Right? Try different numbers, try different triangles, all that kind of thing. I want you guys to just think about this question, all right? A little bit of a challenge for those who find it super easy. If you find it like you're all over it, then try this challenge. Pretty tricky. All right, so great work, everyone. You've done amazing. Hopefully, you guys understand the Pythagoras theorem. Feel free to re feel free to rewatch the video if you need to kind of get a better grasp on it, and just do more practice, 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 practice. Do those questions again on the slides. Keep up with your homework. 
This has been Colin from Scholarly. I hope you guys have the greatest day and very nice rest of your week. See you soon.